Hello everyone, so welcome to our webinar on how to improve your fundraising website through SEO. Hi, my name is Karen Romani. I'm Digital Marketing Manager here at Givergy and I've been in the digital space for approximately five years now. Um, time has flown by. <laughs> I'm Paja Shakarami. I am the Online Marketing Manager here at Givergy and I'm essentially just here to make sure that Kay doesn't get too technical. Okay, so the webinar today is being recorded live. If you do have any questions, please submit them through the chat box on the side of the screen. Um, and we'll do a little Q&A session at the end. If you're watching the recording after, please tweet us your thoughts. Our handle is at UK and use our hashtag raising more. So the agenda for today's webinar, uh, we're going to run through what is SEO, how to utilize keywords, the importance of content, how to gain links, and those all important tips and tricks to take away. So let's kick off. Right, so uh, hi everyone and welcome to a basic introduction to SEO where we will explore what SEO is and how to start a very basic strategy to your website. So uh, let's begin. Everyone who has a website always wants to know how to get to number one on Google. Uh, to get onto the first page uh, requires a lot of patience and time uh, and you should always aim to increase your reach to capture quality traffic and uh, target approximately 10 keywords uh, and aim to get onto the highlighted green positions. This can be the difference between two or three clicks or over 300 daily clicks. So it's, every, it's in everyone's best interest to make sure you're you're in the on the first page. Yeah. So what does SEO stand for? Persia, you should know the the answer to this. Search engine optimization. Perfect. So the answer is obviously search engine optimization, uh, which is another way of saying your website should adhere to the guidelines set by search engines. It's split into technical and non-technical rules that each website should follow, but cheating or breaking the rules can lead to penalties or even bans. So uh, done properly, you will rise in the rankings to claim high positions. So to begin with, we have to understand what area of the ranking page we are going to influence we've split the page into organic versus paid the paid section is uh the top uh on on the top so uh these are ppc adverts that's pay-per-click which occupy um the, the top bit as i said numerous times <laughs> yeah. they are clearly marked with ads and uh, cannot be influenced by seo but um if you do click onto these ads, according to the keyword, you could pay anything between one or a hundred pounds per click. Below is organic, which can be influenced depending on how relevant your content is to the keyword. So your web page should always reflect the keyword you search for as Google gives this preference. So uh, we have to ask the question, what is the internet? Well, I'd like to keep things simple and you know, think of the internet as a bunch of text thrown in with some image, meshed together with code, and voila, a website is born. So we know we have to tell Google your website is relevant, but how do we tell them this is the keyword I want to rank for? Well, in this example, uh, we can see the keyword causes of cancer is marked into the page title of this website. It's also present in the URL and also in the meta description, which tells me it's also in the body of the content. The meta description page charts and URL should be all available to edit in your own content management system or CMS uh, of your website. There you can put your keywords to let Google know how relevant your content is to the actual keyword phrase. Remember, don't repeat keywords or overstuff them in your content as Google is clever enough to know if someone is bending the rules. So for those who haven't written a page title before, I want to show you in this example uh, how to do it. So notice the letters are not capitalized or engaging. The keyword is right at the end of the title and it's cut off. It's not a very good user experience. Um, this wouldn't be best practice, hence why it's ranking on the fourth page. However, in this example, it is clear and concise, easy, simple to read, perfect for mobile devices as well as desktop. Um, 
And if you are struggling to, to visualize writing page titles, I recommend uh, this free tool. It's uh, by Moz, and it can basically just check the length of your titles before you change them on all your pages on your website. So remember, don't overstuff keywords, put your branding at the end of the title, and don't duplicate titles on your website. Everyone should be unique, and uh, make sure every page has one. Same example with meta description, not as important as page titles, as there is a debate whether they are a significant ranking factor. However, they are still vital in providing information about your content in the search engine ranking pages. So below are two examples, and in all honesty, uh, they are both correct and valid, mainly due to the advances of voice search. You don't have to write each meta description. However, I do recommend doing it. Um, if you simply don't, Google will uh, take the content from your page and serve it automatically. For my preference, I still take the time to optimize each one. Um, and then just a few things to remember when uh, writing meta descriptions is always to include a call to action at the end. It entitles clicks. Um, make sure it's unique copy. Always include your keywords and stick to the new 320 character limit. Voice search is also becoming rapidly used for search, so bear this in mind when writing meta descriptions. Another great free tool to check your uh, web speed is pay Google Page Speed Insights. This is important as Google places great emphasis on fast web pages. Slow site would mean a decrease in ranking. Most websites have heavy images which slow the speed down. For optimizing images, I recommend a free tool called Riot or Radical Image Optimization Tool, which will reduce the quality of it, will not reduce the quality of the image, but will just shed off the extra weight. So I recommend giving it a try. I think, Persia, you've used it before as well? Yeah, so I've been using Riot for maybe two years now, and it's it's a completely free tool. You can just download it online, and you just upload your image. There's a little scaling system. You can get that down under 300 KB, and that means your pages are going to uh, load quickly, not only on desktop, but on mobile as well. Yeah, brilliant. Great. So uh, onto the SEO checklist. We've explored some simple on-site SEO tips, but the most important element to achieve your goals and rankings is the first two, keywords and content. This is true SEO, and no website should function without a solid keyword and content strategy. We talked about CMS or content management system and page titles, but keywords are the most important element. The only way to let Google know how relevant your content is, uh, I would actually personally go through a list of around 300 keywords and filter them down until you have a handful that you decide you can create content on and target them to reach your goals. I wouldn't target short tail or one word keywords, but rather long tail or less competitive keywords. Um, so we need to make a keyword list. Uh, where do we start? Well, before this, we need to look at keyword seasonal trends. Um, we have to understand that certain keywords are going to be more popular in certain months throughout the year. So we have to constantly update and check our keyword list every couple of months. And the best way to do this is using keyword tools such as Keyword Planner and Google Trends. Keyword Planner is a tool used actually for PPC, pay-per-click, uh, so that we know the cost and competition of each keyword. I recommend using a Gmail account and logging into this free tool, uh, even if you don't have an AdWords campaign. Um, you may need to fish out uh, thousands of keywords after typing in just a simple phrase or, or a keyword. Um, you can actually export all of this in a CSV file and filter a list of keywords relevant to your causal campaign. Google Trends is uh, slightly better at giving you location relevancy of your keywords and telling you at what month you should target particular words according to how many people are searching for it. I really recommend you trying these free tools for keyword research. In my own personal campaigns, I found various keywords that have performed great. So for example, last year I found the keyword uh, church fundraisers, which was a keyword that crept up around Christmas time. Although a bit obvious, uh, 
uh, in hindsight, I would have not really included uh, that keyword in a content strategy without Google Trends. So it's just an example of uh, how effective this tool can be. Next on the agenda is content. We all hear the phrase content is king, but why is it necessary? Well, first we have to understand uh, there are sort of three types of content. So we have evergreen, which is content that can be relevant all year round. For example, tips to plan your next fundraising event uh, would be something that I could read all year round. Um, next, we have seasonal, which is based around holidays, national events. So for an example, it would be something like wishing everyone a happy Chinese New Year um, or Giving Tuesday. <laughs> um, and the last piece of content is viral, which can never really be purposely created. It's usually uh, a piece of evergreen or seasonal content which resonates with people and just spreads that wildfire. So now we know three simple content types, where do we store our content? Persia should know the answer to this. The blog. Everything should go in the blog. Perfect. So that was definitely not rehearsed. <laughs> the answer is the blog. The blog is the best way to store your content, driving links to your website and placing internal links and call to actions to pull in other pages of your website uh, or blog. Uh, the blog is the best portal syndication for all your content. So if you don't have one already, this is the most vital part of your website. So content will drive the blog, which will then drive links and traffic to your website. But why is this important? Well. The more links you have, the more trust you gain with search engines. Every link passes some authority value, which is often referred to as link juice. So think of links as a vote of confidence. If your content is recognized as a great piece, people want to share, like, comment, and engage. Uh, this dries up your links and therefore your rankings. So you can gain links from all sorts of websites. Here in this link profile, we have links from social, encyclopedias, blogs, directories, etc. So the bigger value website you get a link from, so for example, if I get a link from Wikipedia, the more authority and trust you will gain with search engines. Another avenue to spread your well-written content through social, social syndication should be unique for each channel. Do not simply copy and paste a link with a sentence. Perhaps put a picture on Facebook and a link and a snippet on Twitter, so change up your strategy. However you do it, make sure social syndication is not ignored as, as it's a powerful medium to drive quality traffic to your website. Influencers are also just as important when it comes to spreading awareness of your campaign or cause. Perhaps approach an influencer who operates in a unique space and try to get them to create content on behalf of your cause. I mean, this is a great way to, to bring a new specific audience to your brand and can be surprisingly effective. Blog networks are also great niches to tap into. Getting hold of pockets of followers in various categories can be a smart move. You're thinking, why would I need to target a uh, fashion or food blogger when it's not relevant? Well, actually, if you're creative, uh, what's to stop you asking a food blogger to create a specific bake sale recipe for your cause, or even a fashion blogger on tips on how to wear pink for breast cancer awareness? I mean, you have so many different options here. I really think I encourage people to get creative. Just to touch upon branding, because it's often forgotten, um, no matter how you syndicate, always have distinct branding so people recognize your cause amongst the others of thousands of posts that people see on social on a daily basis. Don't ignore your brand guidelines simply because you also have, you know, Instagram or Facebook in an informal way. Uh, remember, it's the face of your company and brand, so it should always be kept professional. So uh, just to recap, we build fresh links, uh, sorry, fresh uh, unique content on our blog. We syndicate to various social channels and uh, that goes down well. People start linking and sharing uh, the content. Uh, this basically builds uh, authority and Google respond by giving me a stronger ranking. It's really that easy. Lastly, a bit of a bonus tool, um, Uber Suggest is a Google predictor tool that 
captures all variations of a phrase and gives you predict a list of keywords. So for example, if I type in a keyword like fundraiser, you can see all the different fundraiser related keywords and I can add them to a list, export them and put them in my own personal keyword list. I use this tool all the time. I, I find it very effective. It just picks up things that you might have, you know, just split through the net. So lastly, just a, a few tips to take away. Um, always keep an eye on the competitors, but admire, don't copy their strategy. Always do thorough keyword research for your website. Going through 1,000 keywords actually is pretty reasonable. I mean, you know, you'll find once you're, once you're inside of the matrix, uh, the keyword matrix, you'll find... You just can't get out. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, don't always choose high volume keywords. Target some smaller ones, more niche keywords. Remember quality, not quantity. And lastly, if you produce unique, fresh content, your rankings will improve over time. Please don't copy paste articles or blogs or websites from other sources. Google are very clever. They will catch you out. Okay, brilliant. Thank you for that, Kay. So we have had a couple of questions um, come through throughout the presentation. Brilliant. Um, but if you do have anything else you'd like to ask, please do so now um, through the chat box on the side of your screen. So. Let's just have a look here. Okay, actually, this is a really good one. So how long does it take to get on the first page of Google? Right, so um, I would say it actually depends on the keyword and how competitive it is. Uh, I would actually target long tail keywords and the focus keyword and bombard that with loads of content. So could you just explain what the difference is between a focus keyword and a long tail keyword? So a focus keyword would be something like uh, fundraising. It's a very broad term. It's like if you think of an actual category coming back to the Uber Suggest tool, um, it will be like the broadest term that you can one use. One singular word. Probably one singular word. It could be two words as well. Um, where a long tail keyword would be, you know, Fundraising in London, that would be a slightly longer tail variation of it. Um, it would be more a little specific. bit more niche, yeah. specific, local. So I would actually, even though the search demand is lower, I would still try and target this because it would actually be a little bit more relevant, easier to rank in certain cases. But I would have a look at a good selection of long tail keywords. Uh, it obviously depends on the keyword. And if you're bombarding it with lots of content, I should, you should see a shift after six months um, or so. Okay, brilliant. Um, how often should you produce content? Good question. So um, I personally think two to three content pieces a week is adequate, but I must stress, I mean, big focus on quality, not quantity. I'll be happy if someone was just producing one really good piece of uh, content um, on a weekly basis rather than two, three that are just you know, just about make the grade. So you're you're referring to content that would go on the blog rather than social media posts and websites. Yeah, no, of course. Uh, I will, I'm specifically talking about the blog as a traditional SEO. Yeah. <laughs> okay, and then oh, this is actually a really good one. So, how do you get backlinks? Right. Uh, Wouldn't we all like to know? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, the best way to get backlinks is uh, to approach bloggers. I mean, we all get uh, those, I'm sure everyone listening has probably heard of or, or experienced someone emailing in saying they love their blog and, you know, they, they want to create some sort of content share. But um, that's uh, I would, even though it looks quite spammy, I would definitely go down that route. I think approach bloggers, uh, offer a content share, build a healthy backlink profile um, and create a partnership with, with bloggers and, and a relationship. Yeah, so if you have um, celebrity ambassadors or corporate partners, I would reach out to them and see if they can share your content um, to promote your website. Yeah, for sure. Um, I wouldn't pay for or buy links off the shelf. Um, a lot of them can be really low quality and very dodgy. So uh, if you do do go down that route, you will you will get banned from Google as they have algorithms. For example, something called a penguin update uh, that specifically look for those links on your website. So it's happened to very high profile companies. Um, please avoid buying links off the shelf, no matter how good they sound. 
Well, brilliant. That's all the questions um, that we've had. So thank you so much, Kay. Do you have anything else you'd like to add? No. Uh, uh, one thing I will say is uh, this has been a quite a basic introduction. Um, if uh, obviously you know just hitting the the top line. So I am planning to do a more advanced session um, in the near future, and perhaps maybe even a PPC session. So yeah, uh, please contact us. Tell us what you think at uh, inquiries at com, and yeah, for sure, I'll be happy to to contribute a little bit more and educate everyone. Brilliant. Thank you so much for joining us. Take care. Bye. Bye.